headed back to work. Second day, Flagstaff, Arizona. There's more right here. Big herd. All right, headed back up the hill. Logging roads in the rental car. Here we are, back at the landing. <laughs> okay, folks, here we are out in the woods. Today, I'm thinking what might be fun is taking down some trees and turning them into lumber. We're working for a company called Joe Dirt Excavating. The, <laughs> it's funny, the guy went by Joe Dirt long before the movie came out. But we're working for Joe Dirt Excavating, and they also own a mill down the road from here. I haven't seen it yet. We're gonna get a load of logs, and we're gonna head to the mill, and we're gonna turn this tree into lumber. So let's get some trees on the ground and then get headed to the mill. Cut up most of the way. Push him over with this big guy. K and H wedges available at sappysupplies.com. Let's get some more trees. <laughs> six inch bar I do wish I had a little shorter bar it's just what I had this is my Husqvarna 592 we're working over 7,000 feet so the saws have less compression up here less power so I bought a larger power head I wish I had honestly I think like a, a 25 or 28 inch bar would be a little nicer in this wood but this is the bar I brought I'm from Washington State so this is a 36 inch bar that's why the bar is <laughs> so long it's really nice the longer bar for limbing and bucking and stuff because you can stand straight up when you're cutting but these were just following them in their yard and about with the machine so I'm not even bucking or limbing I actually wish I had a little shorter of a bar. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It's Gordy over there. There's a bunch right here. We're just gonna drop them all down the hill. I'm gonna take this corner here. I'll keep working back towards you. Okay, sounds good. I'll be done in about three minutes. I have all these on the ground. Should be here in one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd have this clear cut by now. Working on it, but. With that big Husqvarna. <laughs> and do, those big arms you have. I had to do my makeup for YouTube, you know? <laughs> It's nice out this morning. Yeah, it's awesome. My saw is actually running pretty good. You know how bad it is in Washington? The sun actually came out from behind a tree and it like startled me. I was like, what's that? <laughs> it hasn't died one time yet. The I think it just had oh, to really? get acclimated. Yeah, mine was finicky the first couple tanks. Was it? Yeah, it was. It's running better now. That Weird. chain's a lot better. My chain yesterday was way too much for it. I Too hungry? Yeah, I was way too hungry for it. And then it was running bad, you know? Yeah, so you're gonna take I... all this. I'm gonna get this corner here and work back towards you. Okay, sounds good. My stuff's going to be right here. Don't fall on it. <laughs> conventional notch on these little trees because I feel like you can get a really wide open angle on a really shallow face cut. Wide open conventionals way down low. I think you do get more room for the wedges. I might start cutting these little guys like this. I mean, that's how they do it in Norway, and the trees are about this size, so it makes sense. A few swipes off the front. Sometimes with the Skinner trees, they'll take a little out of the front because it's like you're bringing the hingewood back to the back cut. Back cut first on the side. cut first on this, this monster. <laughs> So I started doing conventionals yeah. on the little ones 
and I think it works better because you can get a really wide open face yep. with a really shallow knot. These little guys, look at it hangs on the stump. Yeah, and your stump's on the ground. Yeah, real low. So I think for these little guys, I'm gonna do conventionals. It actually works pretty good. You I mean, just take all and, the little trees and I'll yeah. take all the <laughs> <laughs> I've just been coming in kind of sideways with the with, with the, the big wedge 12 inch bad boys <laughs> yeah 12 inch or nothing for gordy yeah you take the big ones i'll take the little ones with my 36 inch bar yeah you're a little my under bar i know it's a lot of bar for these trees <laughs> get damn near cut two at once <laughs> these are the black pines here and these are real small ones there's some bigger ones but Everybody in my Instagram comments was saying they're Ponderosa, which I would have thought they yeah. were Ponderosa. I think it's just a common name. That's a yellow pine right there. So that that's a different species than the black, but they used to cut the yellows up here and they don't. The yellows are definitely bigger. Yeah, we actually I, thought we were gonna be cutting the I, yellows. I think they're Ponderosa. I think it's just like a regional thing. I think they call them black pine. Yep. And we would just call these Ponderosas. This wood's pretty hard actually. Way harder than like, you know. Our pine. Yeah. I, I've cut pine in Oregon and it wasn't nothing like this. Yeah, I've cut a lot of ponderosa pine and this stuff's harder. It must just be the, the elevation and the, the slow growing. No wood's too hard for guilty of treason. Thanks for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think the conventionals work a little better on these trees than the Humboldt notches. Also, the Humboldts are nice on hillsides because the space just falls out, but this ground's totally flat. <laughs> Wedge popped out. Crap. Wedge popped out, so now it's sitting back. So I'm gonna try to stick one of my 10 inch wedges right here. There's a little more room to work with than back here, and I'll try to run it parallel to the hinge wood. There's a little more wider opening 
close to the face cut. I got those two wedges in there, and now this tree's lifting. So we got the tree again. We lost it for a minute, my wedge popped out. I should have put a second wedge in there in case that happened, but I didn't, but we got it. We got the tree, we're holding it again. Bounce beans. Not gonna get much more out of that one. So now I'll put this one in the back. This is a triple taper. It's kind of a lot of lift for one wedge. I don't know if you can tell, it's all got extra lift. Cut this tree right where we want it. All right, let's load these logs up and go to the mill. This is stupid Jake. I was trying, I wanted to go there, I, I missed. Put them on top of each other. No big deal, the machine doesn't really care, but still it's not wanted there. Not fun to miss. Let's go drop our gear off and go get some logs loaded up. Head on to the mill, let's make some lumber. Gordy gave me one of his, his rigs, you know, his followers belts. It works really nice. It's got really thick leather padding on the shoulders, so carrying this all like this is, Comfortable-ish. Kevin here, hauling the trees to the landing. Here's Tony, he's gonna delim some of these trees. <laughs> this machine's rad. better at it too. Thank you. It's trippy because it's got two claws and two saws. T Tony was saying just strip all the limbs before you make your cut. That'll help you. Oh, going really? off the end, yeah. So I'm just gonna squeeze this, cut the butt off. Slam it in. Yeah, he says just strip it really good before you make your initial cut off the end. I don't know how he does it without taking off all the bark. He just loosens his his tines a little bit. Yeah. Now run back towards you. Now run back towards you. Just keep running back and forth. Okay. Yep. Knock those other ones off. Okay, I can only do 25 on this one. Yep. I don't even think I need to cut this. Now come back, make your cut. There you go. Right. Nice. Never thought I'd see Jake operating. Yeah. <laughs> my, my You're doing good, my, dude. Really good. You really think so? You really are, yeah. Well, thanks. So I let go with this one. Then I telescope out, and you gotta loosen up the front ones a little bit. Now the log is floppy. There you go. There you go. All right. Let's, uh, let's load this log truck. I like running this thing. This thing's cool. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. All right. Nice job, dude. Yeah, All right, gonna load this log truck. Get on out to the mill.
Jake's trying his hand on the loader now. Loading the truck up. He's actually doing really good for never running equipment before. Takes a while. He's never ran anything like that, so takes a little bit. There you go. All right, that was awesome. That was my first time running the loader, so Tony did that one, and I did this one. That was uh, that was awesome. It's cool. You sit so high up in that cab, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, we cut these this morning. You can tell which ones are mine because all the hinge is perfect. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, logs are all loaded up. We're headed to the mill. Gordy's driving the log truck. Gordy's falling and hauling. <laughs> yeah. We, we got it. Gordy's got to buy one of these things. It's on my wish list. <laughs> Let's go, baby. All right. Oh yeah, this thing's nice. You look like you belong in this truck, Gordy. I love this thing. <laughs> Old army truck. Let's go make some lumber. Girl, <laughs> get her. Oh, man. This isn't even much of a hill. Come on, baby. Pretty heavy, you know? Yeah. This thing's rad. Oh, yeah. She's solid. Oh, that's <laughs> Here we are at the mill. This is Pine Line Timber Company. So this is all their waste pile. So, Tony, what happens with all this waste? So the slabs go to the Navajo Reservation for heat, and then whatever's left over, when we get cut off from them, we'll go to the power plant, be ground into the power plant. Okay, and you were saying you donate all this, right? Yes, so you guys donated it. Donate it to the reservation for heat. And then the rounds too? The rounds too, yeah, they'll burn those too. And then what happens to the sawdust? And the, the wood chips. Sawdust goes to the horse tracks, one in Phoenix, Turf Paradise, and then they have one in Prescott Valley, and then the wood or the wood chips go all to the power plant right now. Oh, okay. They burn this turn into electricity? Yep. Huh. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, that's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of wood. He said that since they shut down coal, the natives used to burn that for heat. Now they burn this wood instead. So they just donate it to them. We're right by the Navajo Nation, which is the biggest Indian Reservation in the United States. Also the Hopis too. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, let's make some lumber. I think it's a generator? Crazy. So they don't have power out here. They're getting power brought out to here, but this is the, the generator that runs the mill. Good gravy, this thing is huge. Wow, that is quite the generator. <laughs> All right, Tony's unloading our lumber. Chipper. Wow. It's a nice chair you got there. 
right, what are we milling up right here? Uh, cans. 8x8, eight 6x8, eight, 6x6, six six, 4x6, and 4x4. Four Got it. That saw is cutting him to eight feet three inches. size here. And all the sawdust comes here. Amazing. Super chipper. trees that me and Gordy cut this morning. Pretty rad, so from timber to lumber. There you have it, look at all the, the wood. So these are all, all the cants from all the trees that we did this morning. The big ones are the ones I did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's cool to see the whole process, you know. I've cut trees a bunch of times and I've seen a mill a few times, never one this big, but it's just cool to see it growing in the ground in the morning and by the afternoon. It's lumber, so it's ready to be used to build stuff. And it's just, it's amazing to see the whole process. It's cool that they own both the logging company and the mill. That's about it for this video. So hopefully you like that. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for filming me, Gordy. No problem. Make sure you follow Gordy, West Coast Saw. Check out his website, westcoastsaw.com. Thanks for bringing me. Yeah, no problem.